Right then, MEI M2, June 2011, question 3 on centre of mass. As usual, pause the video as we go through, um, as I go through and show you all the different parts of this question. That's the first part, fairly standard centre of mass. When you're ready, resume playing the video. Here's the second part. And the third part brings in three dimensions. And the fourth part. Okay, if you have, you might need to replay and pause each part of that just to be clear about what the question is asking. Right, we'll make a start on part one. So it's a standard center of mass type question. The thing to do is to make up a table of masses and distances. So, ah, that worked. I've already done that except I've lost some of my writing. So here, that should say mass, and that is total. So just pause the video and check that table. It shows the coordinates of the center of mass of each of the... I've, I've broken the, the shape up into a four, a rectangle size four, a rectangle size two there, two across there, and two, two down there. So you have to take care writing down the masses and the coordinates of the central mass of each of those bits. Once you've done that though, we're going to use th this idea that the total mass times its position vector is the sum of the individual masses times their position vectors. M-I-R-I -I, that's supposed to say. If that looks new to you, it's only a nice compact way of, uh, of taking moments about the x-axis and the y-axis in one go. This is what we'll get, 10 times x bar y bar is equal to 4 times minus 0.52 plus 2 times 0.53, 2 times 2, 3.5, just running out of room now, I'll have to put that down here, plus 2 times 2.52. Sorry, I just ran out of space at the end there. So we'll get 10 lots of x bar y bar equals 8.25, giving x bar is 8.8, I should say, and y bar is 2.5 as required. Okay, that's the first part of the question. Um, for part two of the question, it's a bit of a re... Oh no, part two is hanging it up by strings. And then part three returns the same ideas as part one. So there's a diagram of the plate. We're hanging it up by two strings. Here's our one from J, one from H. Let's show the weight of it here. So we've got, let's call that one there... Um, T1 and that one T2. The weight of the whole thing apparently is 3.2. There's the center of mass. We know the coordinates of that from the first part. So, taking moments about J to go directly to an equation for T2. T2 times 4 is equal to 3.2 times 1.8 using the result from part 1 because the center of mass was measured from the um, yeah, the y-axis, and we've got another distance of 1 to get to the line of action of t1. So it's 0 0.8 plus 1. Right, and that gives us t2 equals 1.44. Resolving vertically, t1 plus t2 equals 3.2. So T1 equals 1.76. Right, five marks for that part. That's quite generous. On we go with the next bit, which is a three-dimensional bit. And again, I've taken the liberty, because I was bound to make a mistake otherwise, of um, creating a table of masses and distances. Now you need to pause the video and look at this carefully and make sure you agree 
It's a bit fiddly. Split it up into sensible units and write down the mass and where the center of mass is in terms of 3D coordinates. So for example, the first rectangle I've used is this one here, one, two, three, four. It's represented in this column here. So its mass is four. Its center of mass is on this line here at a Y coordinate of two. The Z value of the center of mass is halfway up that line, so 0 0.5. And because it's in the YZ plane, it's got no X, its X coordinate is zero for that one. So X is zero, Y two, Z 0 0.5. You do the same for the other, for this one, that one, and that one. And then a rerun of part one, but with three dimensions. So we've got 10, X bar, Y bar, Z bar, is equal to 4, let's be careful copying this down, 0 to 2.5, plus 2, 0 0.530, yeah, plus 2, you can see what I'm doing, I'm just putting the values in from the table, plus 2, uh, 2.53 minus 1. Right, combine all those vectors and we get 10, 27, 0. Which gives us what they require here. X bar is 1, Y bar is 2.7, and Z is Z bar is 0. Right, five marks for that part. They then go on for the last bit to ask you about, about how, it'll, how it'll hang if it's hung from a string attached to O. Now, this is one of those questions where you know that the vertical will be from O through the center of mass. So if I draw this, oops, oh, what's happening? Right, I finally managed to draw the lines. Um, it'll hang from O with the center mass vertically below O, but more to the point, because the center mass of this plane shape is in the Y, in the X, Y plane, then the vertical would be this line OG in this plane here, because the Z bar is naught. So the, they want the angle between the edge OI, which is the Y axis, and the vertical, which will be OG. Well, if you look at, you can see in the diagram we've drawn there, and we turn it into this triangle here, the angle they want theta is this one in here and tan theta will be the x coordinate of the center of mass over the y 1 over 2.7 so let's just finish that off tan theta equals 1 over 2.7 and that gives us uh, I don't think I've worked it out just yet. Just need to pause it and quickly use the calculator. And that gives us theta equals 20.3 degrees. And that's it. That's the end of that question. Um, just uh, let me check the allocation of marks. So, yeah, going back. Going back through these parts then to the first part. That's the first part there. For this bit then we've got um, right four marks for this. It was basically a method mark for creating a table like that or similar. A B mark for seeing the right values in there. And two E marks as they call them for showing the results that were required 0.8 and 2.5. 
for the tensions in the second part. Um, let me just see here. Five marks for this then. There was a method mark for resolving and a method mark for taking moments. So a method mark there, method mark there. Um, that was two, and then the other the three marks were... Oh, there was a B mark for the 1.8 for the correct distance, and then an accuracy mark, and an accuracy mark. Oh, that's those five. For the 3D one, um, five marks for this. It was just one method mark, and the rest were, were marks for the um, putting the right values in. So there were a couple of B marks in the table for seeing the right numbers in there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there was two E marks for getting the correct answer. Presumably the X and the Y then. For the angle, I think was there four marks for this? Yeah, there was four marks for this. So there was one method mark and three accuracy marks for, for getting the, the triangle right. And a method mark and an accuracy mark. Yep, four marks for that. Right, that was June 2011, question three. I hope that was some use. There's some more information on the um, Further Math Support Program. Thanks for listening.